All right, awesome. Welcome, everybody. I uh, just want to say welcome. Um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, you guys are all here for the UCLA School of Nursing APRN program. Uh, today is our um, admissions information session. So just some really house um, cleaning. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put that in the Q&A. Um, throughout today's information session, I'll make sure to answer those. Um, if you um, can refrain from using the chat, uh, that'd be great. Um, the chat will be, you know, it'll be a little bit hard for me to go between the chat and the Q&A. So trust me, if you have any questions, feel free to put in the Q&A and we'll make sure to answer all of those uh, before the end of today's session. All right, so just want to say welcome. Okay, so my name is Mark Coven. I am the Director of Recruitment, Outreach, and Admission. I also have two team members who are not here with me today, um, but uh, the first one is Jamie Gama, as well as Natalie Asensio. And so for today, I just want to make sure that I can provide you guys with, you know, specific information about our post licensure program, uh, which is our APRN. Um, uh, APRN stands for Advanced Practice Registered Nurse, so it's an acronym that we use here. UCLA, we use acronyms pretty much for <laughs> almost everything. So, um, yeah, you would have to get used to saying the APRN program. Okay, so a lot of people are thinking, why UCLA? So before I do that, I do want to make sure that everyone who's joining us today um, has either completed their BSN um, or maybe even in the midst of completing the BSN. So this APRN program is going to be for BSN prepared students or nursing um, students who want to further their education. Um, and so just want to make sure that that house cleaning part is there. Okay, so a lot of people ask why UCLA, right? And so sometimes people are like, well, you know, it's UCLA, right? It doesn't have to sell itself. Um, but there's a lot of things that we do within the School of Nursing that we think makes us really attractive. The first thing is that we're a small community within the big city, right, of Los Angeles. And with that, if you're thinking about, if you guys have been to Westwood, uh, it's its own community within Los Angeles. And so what I mean by that is uh, we have our own uh, police department, which is right there on campus. We have the number one hospital, of course, uh, Ronald Reagan, which is right there on campus. Uh, we have uh, transportation services. So we have bus lines that come in and out of Westwood um, that take our students, our graduate students to their grad housing and or all throughout the LA area or West LA area. Uh, so we have one of the, big, the biggest um, grocery stores uh, that you'll see on the West side as well. Um, if you go into the village um, and around Westwood, there's a lot of places to eat and shop and hang out. And so we think that UCLA is its own community if you're thinking within Los Angeles. But the same thing could be said if we're thinking more on the academic side in terms of the School of Nursing. Uh, we are a small program. Um, we are a small department, I should say, uh, within you know how big UCLA is. In total, in terms of the different programs that we have, we have about five different programs from our undergraduate um, to our graduate programs. And in that we have a little over 600 students. So we are a small program, but we do offer a lot for our students um, in terms of our resources. To name some, but not all, uh, we have our own director of financial aid, which is amazing. Knowing that you won't have to go to upper campus to have you know, any of your questions answered in the sense of you, know, you being a random student and they're looking up through information, right? Our director of financial aid, she does um, an amazing job of giving, you know, providing financial resources, scholarships, um, if there's loans and things like that. And later on in today's info session, she has a recording that I'm going to play for you guys as well. So that's going to be important. But with that, we have a mentorship program, which is really cool. What we do is we match up a first year student uh, with a second year. Um, and it's a really cool thing in terms of, you know, not only are you going to, you know, have an immediate friend while you're into the program, but um, they will give you some ins and outs, right, in terms of maybe passing down some information that's important. If it's books, uh, whatever it is, you really have someone that's going to be there for you throughout your, your two years in the program. Uh, we have specialty coaches. Uh, we have uh, faculty advisors. We have our own student affairs uh, service um, um, coordinator uh, who goes by Stephanie, who's going to be, you know, your right-hand person to make sure that you're matriculating and moving forward as you go throughout the program. Um, we have tons of other things that I can keep going on and on, but we do think it's what makes our students be successful, right? Is we just wanna make sure we're giving them as many resources and outlets that they can to be successful. With that, we are lucky. I'm mean, honored to be, um, you know, one of the top nursing schools, um, you know, not only, you know, in the state of California, but in the world. Um, and that is based off the US News and World Reports, uh, which you are seeing here is UCLA. We are the number one college 
um, public university. And so that is something that we're really excited about as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the program. Um, so first and foremost, all of our specialties are full-time, okay? Um, and what we mean by that is, as you get ready to apply to the program, you will have to apply to a specific specialty. So it's not like you're applying for a general, you know, APRN uh, program, you will be applying to different specialties. Um, and we will be talking about that as well. The second bullet you're seeing here is that um, as of now, uh, online is not an option. Uh, we are traditional in the sense that our, you know, program and our students will be coming in in person. Um, you know, we have that traditional face-to-face -face learning, if it's in the classroom, the simulation lab, and of course, when you're just doing your clinical rotations. Uh, specific days for our classes, um, we do have it in the sense that, yeah, we are full-time, but we have specific days that we want you to, to come to campus. Um, if you're thinking in terms of like your theory, lecture courses, uh, it's typically gonna be about Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, it could be a Monday, Wednesday. Uh, but what we try to do is make it back to back that way, depending on where you're traveling from, um, you know, you have to dedicate at least, you know, two days, which could be back to back. Now, uh, that does not include your clinical rotations, right? That also varies. And um, that could be on different days as well. The cool thing about that, though, is depending on, let's say, if you live, you know, outside of LA or a little bit, you know, further away from campus, instead of doing your clinical rotation at Ronald Reagan, um, if you wish to do it somewhere close to home, we have a clinical placement team that does a really good job of finding partnerships and commitments with those hospitals for you to be able to do your rotation. So that's part's really cool. Um, there have been students in the past who uh, lived in, you know, the OC, um, so right, so Orange County or IE in the Empire, even as far down as San Diego, right? So it would be, you know, a trek if you're thinking about coming up um, to do your classes. But what we would try to do is for your clinical rotations, try to find a partnership in your the local hospital. That way it eases some of that, that back and forth for you. There's also one thing that UCLA likes to say in terms of um, what they would find for you to be successful. Um, and that has to do with basically your time commitment right to your studies. So they say for each unit that is taken, they want you to dedicate at least three hours, right? So let's say for any reason, if you, uh, for one quarter, you have about 14 units, um, what they're saying is if you dedicate about 42 hours of studying, if it's in or outside, they think that would make you be a successful student. Of course, um, you guys all know what it takes to be successful. And so time management does depend on the individual. Uh, you may find it that you have to study more, you may study less. Um, it can be combined with, you know, group sessions and so forth. So it's going to be up to you. Um, but of course, uh, not only are you going to have your resources in the School of Nursing, but the university also provides that for you as well. Okay, so what does a typical student look like? Um, I'm always hesitant to show this because I think a lot of people will see this and say, okay, do I fit this mold? Um, and I think the good thing about our program and the beauty about our program is that everyone's gonna come in um, with a different background um, in terms of uh, their experiences, who they are, age, gender, and so forth, right? But just to let you know in terms of what our incoming class looks like, this does change. Uh, we've been having um, uh, some people being admitted um, off a wait list and some people withdrawing, but we will have a class as we get ready to start this fall. And uh, as of today, of the 66 uh, students that we're bringing in, uh, you'll see that 58 of them identified as female, eight have identified as male. But if you're looking at the years of clinical experience in terms of when they applied, um, as you see, the more experience that you have, it seems like the more competitive you would be. Um, and so, yeah, what you're seeing here is, um, Obviously, if you have what two to about you know five or more years of experience, um, you're able to really get an understanding of why you want to enter um, an advanced practice role, especially if you're thinking about you know a nurse practitioner, a clinical nurse specialist, or even dual. Um, what you see is for those that have less than two years of experience, um, doesn't mean that they're not as competitive, um, but it just means that we're receiving more people's or more applications for people that are. Um, having more years of experience. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, but of course, you guys all know your own background in terms of how many years of experience you have. And if you feel that it's helped prepare you, right, to apply um, to an advanced practice program. Okay, so let's talk about some of the specialties uh, that we offer. Um, and so the first one is our adult juror acute care. And with it, we offer the CNS, uh, which is clinical nurse specialist. 
the NP, right, for a nurse practitioner, as well as the dual. Okay, so with that, well, with that specialty, uh, we are looking to bring in a total of 40 students. Um, and so again, even though we offer the CMS, NP, and dual, uh, the mission goal is to bring in 40. Next is gonna be our adult gerontology primary program. And so our goal is to bring in 30. But with that, uh, we would want to, if we can, bring in 20, which are gonna be applying for the adult gerontology uh, primary NP. And for those that are interested in occupational environmental health, we can bring in about 10 students. So 20 plus 10, our goal is to bring in 30. Uh, for our pediatric uh, nurse practitioner uh, primary care program, our goal is to bring in about 22 students. And so we do have kind of subspecialties built within the peds. And so our first one is the pediatric nurse practitioner, dual primary and acute care. We have the pediatric nurse practitioner, uh, clinical nurse specialist. That would be dual acute care, CNS. And then we have the pediatrics, uh, CNS. Okay, so again, with the goal of bringing in 22. And the last, we have our FNP, the goal of bringing in 40 students. Um, and with the FNP, uh, we do also have the occupational uh, health um, specialty built in within that too. So if you're thinking about doing that, um, our goal is to bring in about 40 students. Over the years, our most competitive specialties have come out to be the family nurse practitioner, as well as our adult juro acute care uh, program. The uh, adult juro primary and the pediatric um, specialties are not as competitive in the sense that we have not been able to meet our target goal, um, but we're hoping to do that uh, this year. Um, but competitively speaking, typically it's our acute care and our family MP. Okay, so let's talk about the dual certification. For anyone that may be interested, right, if you're thinking about combining the CNS with the NP, what you're thinking about is you're gonna be doing a little over a thousand hours of your clinical experience. And so basically your CNS portion, uh, it's gonna be about 500 plus hours. And knowing that this is a two-year program, um, typically for those that wanna do a dual, especially if you're thinking about you know, adding the CNS, is where you'll be doing that between um, the summer as you finish year one before you enter year two. Okay, so again, if you're thinking about doing a CNS, um, I would recommend doing it. I um, always give this example in, um, in a sense of, for someone who you know, is thinking about getting an NP, they go through the NP program, they graduate, um, they start working, and then maybe in a year or a couple of years, whatever the case is, they're like, aha, you know, I think I wanna go back and get my CNS. Well, it's not that easy in the sense of, you know, applying back to our program and saying, hey, I just wanna finish these $500. Um, it would be almost as if you're having to do almost another two-year program again. And so what we always say is, hey, if you have an inkling of, of wanting to, to do the dual and, and getting your CNS, you're just gonna have to dedicate one summer. Um, it will be a lot. It will be that one summer where you're not gonna be able to see family and friends as much, um, but the outcome is gonna be really cool. Um, and so, yeah, you will be having to do that between your first um, and second year. So you will be doing that summer. If we're gonna look at the specialties that do offer the dual certification, again, you're gonna see it's the adult juro acute care, right? So the CNSMP, the pediatric uh, nurse practitioner, uh, dual primary acute care, um, as well as um, the uh, dual acute care CNS um, uh, program as well. Okay, so there's just a few that we do offer. Um, and for those that are interested, I definitely recommend, you know, taking a hard look at that and really thinking about how that can help benefit you as you are moving forward um, through your, you know, nursing education and career. Okay, so some, you know, kind of some additional insights and some Q and A's that people typically will ask. Um, is what is the minimum GPA? Uh, so that will be a 3.0 that is um, required by UCLA Graduate Division is that the individual apply that they have a minimum GPA from the undergraduate work. Now, if you do not have a, uh, a minimum GPA with 3.0, it does not automatically you know, mean that you're gonna be denied from the university or the program. Um, it is up to us in the admissions office um, and to our faculty who admit the student uh, to write a justification to grad division saying, hey, we still think you're a stellar student with the potential of success, even if your GPA is under 3.0. There may be some people who also have maybe two degrees. Um, so this is the case sometimes where someone's first undergraduate degree was in a non, 
uh, nursing background. Um, and then you've maybe completed an accelerated BSN. Um, that, that's okay. The university um, will ask for at least one of your undergraduate degrees to be a 3.0 uh, minimum. In the School of Nursing, if for any reason you do have two bachelor's degrees, we will look at the uh, BSN. Uh, so that's how we do our uh, evaluation. Okay, so how much can I work? Um, it's a really good question. Uh, knowing that this is a full-time program, our faculty don't recommend working full-time, right? Knowing just you know, the intensity of the program, the commitment and how much it asks from you. Uh, we do recommend if you have to work uh, that it be part-time or per diem, knowing that you're gonna have to schedule your work schedule around right, your uh, school schedule. Again, knowing that you know the days of the classes are typically going to be set, as well as the times, you may have to, uh, you know, find you know work on the weekends or maybe some night shifts and things like that. So, you do get your schedule ahead of time, and um, so hopefully you'll be able to implement the work uh, when it comes to that as well. All right, how often do I have to come to UCLA? Um, right, so you know, required or dedicated, we write at least two days throughout the week um, but again that doesn't include you know you wanted to come to campus you know to study you know maybe get some more extra simulation skill work um, you know group work whatever the case is right so that's going to vary depending on um, what is going to be required from you right so uh, we say at least two but you may see yourself on campus three four maybe five days depending on the quarter um, and the extra work that you're going to be wanting to put in yeah, so the next question is what days of the NP clinical rotations offered? Again, that's going to vary um, depending on what hospital you're going to be doing your, rota your rotations at, as well as you know coming to the agreement with your preceptor um, to try to um, accommodate both of your guys' schedule in a sense, right? Knowing if you are going to be working, um, right, you want to make sure that you're going to be able to uh, still get your clinical hours in there. Okay, next is the program BRN and CC. And E approved. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, that's really important if you're starting to you know, look around and think about some nursing programs. You want to make sure one, are they accredited, right? You don't want to spend your time and or your money um, to a program or university that may not be accredited, uh, which basically means you would not be able to sit for the national certification exam, right? Which is that last bullet. And so, yes, our students can. So that part is really cool in the sense that it's not just state. Right, so you can graduate here from UCLA. Um, and if you want to, you know, move to New Jersey or somewhere on the East Coast uh, to get your your, your certification, uh, you will be able to do that. This program is really cool in the sense that um, we're preparing, you know, advanced practice nurses to work, uh, you know, across the country, as as well as around the world. So, let's see. Okay, so for the MSN APRN program. Right, if we're thinking about again um, how many days a week or might be required for you to come, if we're thinking you know one, right? It's going to be about two days a week uh, because during your fall quarter you're not going to be required to um, do your clinical rotations. That doesn't start until winter quarter, right? So you're thinking about two to three days during the winter, and then same for spring. If you are thinking about doing the dual, right? So summer is where you're going to be completing your CNS work, then you're going to start year two. And it does fall back in terms of the course requirement um, and or the clinical rotations are going to be required from you, uh, but you're still going to be thinking about one to two days um, as you finish up year two. As you look into spring, right, during the spring, you're going to have your, your comps, right, so your composition, um, composition, sorry, exam, and then you'll follow that up with uh, graduation. Okay, so let me pause there to see if anyone has any questions about the program uh, before we get into the application process? So I'm just going to hang tight for about 30 seconds, see if you have any questions. Feel free to put that in the QA. Okay, all right. So let's keep moving forward and we're gonna talk about the application process. Okay, so, um, oh, aha, okay, I see a question coming in. 
All right, someone is asking, are there times when you have to do more than one day of clinicals? Um, yeah, there could be. Um, there could be an instance where you'll um, have to do more than one day of clinicals. Um, that could be for any reason if you did fall behind in your hours, knowing that there are a certain amount of hours that you'll have to do per um, quarter. Um, and if, and or if you're thinking about doing the CMS, right now, that you're gonna have to get those 500 hours, uh, there could be times where you're gonna have to do more um, than one day of clinical. So that will be determined um, by our program director, who you'll be working with, um, your faculty advisor, as well as your, your uh, clinical preceptor. Um, so they'll make sure to ensure that you, obviously will, will be completing all your hours um, and to try to do that in a timely manner. Okay. Let's see. Got some good questions here. Okay. Someone is also asking, uh, is there accommodation for pregnant students during the program? Uh, yes, that's a really good question. Uh, we actually have two uh, students that are entering this fall um, that have reached out to us and said that they're pregnant. Um, and so we're obviously super excited for them. Um, and so we do host accommodations for uh, students, um, of course, that are pregnant. Um, that may happen before they start the program or even while you're in it. So we have tons of of uh, resources um, to make sure that, you know, you continue being a student if that's what you choose um, to make sure that you'll still be successful. So yes, we definitely do that. And if we, or if I were to continue, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, uh, we have resources uh, for students and we even have, you know, disabilities or whatever the case is. So uh, we, we have a, a full, um, gamut of resources to make sure that, you know, whatever type of student we have that's going to be entering with us, um, that they will be um, having everything they need to be successful. Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, here's another good question. Are there additional courses besides and during the school year uh, for the dual program besides the, the clinicals? Um, and so, uh, yes, there is. Um, you will be uh, during that summer, be taking some CNS coursework as well. So coursework as well as your clinicals uh, to ensure um, that you're having the requisite coursework needed uh, by the BRN um, to sit for the national certification exam. All right, another great question is, uh, does our program accept international students? Yes, of course we do. We definitely accept international students. Um, I'll be going over the admission uh, requirements. Uh, which is going to be the same for um, international students. There's just going to be one additional, um, basically, exam. Uh, and I'll go over that. Uh, but yes, we do accept international students. Let's see. Ah, will the school help find clinical placements? Yes. So I think that's really important, right? If you're if you're thinking about you know, not only UCLA, but other, um, you know, uh, nursing programs is, uh, do they help with the clinical placements? Um, so yeah, it's really important, right? Because there are some schools out there where uh, you'll have to be the one that finds the clinical placements. And um, I'm not sure if you've heard those horror stories, but it's really difficult. And so, you know, we have our own clinical placement team here in the School of Nursing uh, that does all that for you. So that's one less stress and one less headache to think about. So yes, we do have that. Okay. Okay, let's see. Um, just... Okay, so someone's asking if accepted, um, for the next cohort, can you delay your start? Unfortunately not. So in the sense, um, you're referring to deferment. So for students that are admitted into the program, they cannot defer their admission for the following year. So you really have to think about if the year of 2024 is the year you wanna start, um, that you'll definitely wanna apply for that. If for any reason you feel like you may not be ready for fall 2024, and you would potentially wanna wait for you know, fall 2025. Now things can happen, right? As you are applying for, you know, fall 2024, you're ready to go. And if for any reason, you know, situation comes up, you know, it could be personal, family, finances, wherever the case is, um, that does happen. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the university does not allow students to defer. Um, and so that has been the case for, you know, some, a couple of students that are admitted for this fall 2023. 
Um, and so the university is no longer allowing deferment. Okay, are there uh, on-campus accommodations for students while in the grad program? Yes, yes. So the university has graduate and undergraduate um, resources and accommodations. Um, and so uh, our grad students um, are privy to that information. Um, so yes, depending on whatever you're looking for in terms of the accommodation, of course, here in the School of Nursing, we'll try to do that first. And then if not, we go to the campus resources. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, um, let's see here. Okay, so someone's saying this is not a ELM. Yeah, this is not an entry level master's program. Um, so thank you for, for asking that. We do have an entry level master's program, but that is separate. So this program that I'm going over today uh, is gonna be for those that have a BSN. So you do need your BSN. Um, for anyone that is um, thinking about our master's entry program, we do have that. Uh, please check out our website. We do have separate information sessions for that as well. Uh, so we'll be able to accommodate you there. Okay. All right. And so I see another question here, which is a perfect lead off. Um, someone is asking, when will the application open? And is it only for fall? Okay. So let's leave that there really fast. Um, there's a couple more questions. I'll make sure to get to those. Um, but let's get to the application process. Okay. So the application um, will become available uh, the second week of September, typically is always after Labor Day. Um, and you will be able to get to it by going to grad.ucla.edu. And so this School of Nursing application is within the graduate admission website. So it's only gonna be one application that you'll have to apply to. Okay, so again, it's gonna open up after Labor Day. If you were to, for any reason to go onto the website now, um, you will be looking at last year's website. So for anyone who may have started, I would recommend holding off because the university is gonna take down the application uh, for about a couple of weeks uh, to, to get it ready and prepared for uh, the fall 2024 admission cycle. So please hang on tight. I would wait um, until after Labor Day, typically about the second week of September uh, for the application to become available uh, at www.grad.ucla.edu. Okay, so um, what you'll be seeing is once you start your application, it's gonna say, hey, what are your plans for graduate study? And there's going to be an application type. So there's going to be new, readmission, and renewal. Um, everyone here might be applying as a new applicant. And so that basically means this is your first time applying to the university, or maybe you're reapplying um, for any reason. Maybe if you weren't accepted you know, the previous year, uh, you'll still be a, a, uh, a new application type. Um, readmission um, is for anyone who um, might have been admitted into the university. Um, uh, but uh, did not start. Uh, renewal is going to be for someone who already has a graduate degree here at UCLA. Um, it, uh, and it could be, you know, a grad degree and maybe public health or whatever the case is, and you're going for another grad degree. And so that's what the renewal is. The most important thing, though, is that it's going to be the major program. And so as you're going in there, you want to make sure that you're going to be selecting nursing, uh, MSN, APRN. Okay, we do have other grad programs. Um, so we have the nursing MSN master's entry program, which I was speaking to a little bit about earlier. And then we have two, two doctoral programs. So we have our DAP and our PhD. So this is important in, in terms of making sure that you're selecting the right major program, because then it would then trigger the correct application for you to continue applying. Okay, so let's talk about some of the nursing specializations. Again, uh, we went over those. And so what you'll be doing is once you select nursing MSN, uh, APRN, it's then going to ask you to select the uh, specialty of your choice. And as you guys remember, probably one of the first things I said during today's info session is that you do have to select one of the specialties. So you would, you know, unfortunately, would not be able to select multiple. So at the time of application, you would have to know um, what specialty you want to apply for and which one you want to get into. Um, if there are, for any reason, you apply and you're admitted into a specialty, 
but you are thinking about maybe switching it, uh, you can potentially have that possibility to switch before the program starts. But once you're in the program, unfortunately, you will not be able to start. Okay. So just taking a look at that. And so what you'll do is you'll be able to select from the drop down the specialty of your choice. Okay, so for the transcripts, oh, and put too many S's there, but for the transcripts, uh, what we are gonna be asking uh, for you to do is um, upload your unofficial transcripts, if you can, in chronological order from basically the highest education um, received, okay? And so basically that could be your undergraduate degrees or degree. Um, you're gonna to wanna to implement that there. There is hopefully a section in the application where it you'll start typing it in and it'll look it up and then it'll have a drop down. You'll be able to select it um, and then go from there. And then what you'll be able to do is upload your unofficial transcripts. Um, so if you haven't already, go to your school's website, um, download your unofficial transcript, save it. And then that way, once you get ready to apply, uh, you'll be able to find it and then upload there. Once admitted into the program, that's when we're actually gonna ask for official transcripts. So the cool thing about applying um, is that you're gonna be able to save some money and just upload your, upload your unofficial transcripts. Um, but at the time of admission um, and you receive your, admission, your official acceptance letter, uh, we will ask that you submit your official transcripts. We do have two ways of accepting those. Uh, one could be hard copy or snail mail, I guess is what we're now calling it. Um, if your university does that, and or if your university does the official electronic transcripts, uh, we accept those as well. Um, so either one uh, would be accepted, uh, but we'll make sure to reach out to you at the time of application. Okay, so what does a typical student um, uh, look like or what is, the, what is the, the type of student, I should say, that we look for? Okay, so the first thing is we want you to have pretty much a kind of a clear self-assessment right, of your potential goals right, for graduate study as well as your advanced practice specialization that you're selecting. Um, of course, we want you to have reasons for why you're selecting and choosing us here at the UCLA School of Nursing. We also want you to make sure that you're gonna clearly state your goals, right? And, and that showing that you understand, you know, the advanced practice role, uh, what it means to you um, and how you wanna apply it once you graduate. Um, we also want you to have clinical experiences um, as a registered nurse, all right? And so again, um, for those that have you know, years of experience, you're gonna to wanna to talk about what you were able to do, what you learned from it, how you're able to apply it, and what that means in terms of you moving forward for the advanced practice role. Uh, we also look at your leadership you know, experiences, you know, the different activities that you've done, um, as well as the qualities. And so if you can, um, in the application, if it's in you know, the essays or your resume, um, you know, help indicate in terms of the you know, duration of time and what you've done. Uh, we also want to see if you have any multicultural or diverse experience. Uh, we also want to see if you have um, bilingual ability, multilingual, if you speak different languages, what ability, what level, um, and how you've been able to apply that. And then also if you've been able to overcome any disadvantaged, you know, backgrounds or situations that have happened not only in your you know, professional career, but even um, personally. Um, and so one ex simple example that we typically would say, just to kind of give you an idea, is if you're a first generation um, you know, college student, um, that, that is you know, someone who's been able to overcome um, something that could be you know, socially, uh, economic um, disadvantage compared to others. Um, so here are just some of the things that we want you to implement as you're starting to think about what you're gonna put in your application. And by doing that, uh, we are gonna ask that you submit a statement of purpose. And so for the statement of purpose, right, um, this is the really integral part of our application uh, where we're able to really get an understanding of who you are as an individual, um, as a professional, and as a person, okay? Um, and so in it, um, we want you to use um, your academic you know, interests, um, the preparation, right, that you've done to, to prepare yourself for grad study, um, as well as making sure that, you know, you're a perfect fit for you know, the proposed uh, program of interest. For the statement of purpose, it's gonna be about a thousand uh, words in length. Um, so I believe it's actually more than one page. I think it should probably be about two pages if we're thinking if it's a single space, uh, but it's about a thousand words. Um, and so uh, the next um, um, 
section you'll see it's going to talk about or it's going to offer different questions um, and so you don't have to answer every one of these questions but what you want to do um, is think about if we're thinking about this one here right in terms of what it looks like to be an applicant really think about these bullets and be able to apply them to the statement of purpose and so here are just some of the questions that uh, the application will be asking so you don't have to answer all of them uh, but you want to answer the ones that you think are necessary and then also as you're writing your statement of purpose it doesn't have to be okay you know here's question one right what is your you know, your proposed and applying for graduate study in your uh, specific degree program and you don't have to answer it right so you don't have to say question one answer question two answer we recommend that applicants um, write a you know kind of a free-flowing creative unique uh, statement of purpose um, instead of it you know kind of being generic and say hey this is question one answer question two and so forth uh, we hope that you would open up be creative and really get us um, you know captured in the sense of you know why you want to apply to a program um, and what it really means to you next is going to be our personal statement okay so for the personal statement it's going to be about a thousand words as well um, so this one could we have it right it's going to be about two pages but the statement of purpose should not be duplicated, right? In terms of what the statement of purpose is. The personal statement is where we really want you to talk about your own background, your accomplishments and life experiences that you think have helped prepare you for graduate study. Okay, and so that could be personal as you're seeing cultural, economic, social experiences, challenge and opportunities that are relevant to your academic journey, right? So this is where you're gonna be able to talk about the aspects of your personal background, right? In terms of those accomplishments um, and what that means. Also be able to talk about your contribution to diversity, um, right? And um, what you also plan on doing even after graduating. What communities do you wanna work in? What communities do you wanna serve? Um, and we think that's important, right? So again, if I were to go back, sorry about that, but if we were to go back, right, to what we look for in an applicant, there's a lot of these bullet points here that are gonna to be touched upon either the statement of purpose or personal statement. Okay, let's see. Okay, so for the resume and the for the or CV, um, what we want you to do um, is highlight your educational experiences, right, including your honors received, work experience, volunteer experience, and any professional organization um, or associations that you belong to. Definitely put it in a chronological order. You guys have all done resumes before. Um, but for us, it can exceed one page, right? Typically a work resume, you know, you have to fit it all in one page. Um, but for us, it can exceed one page. Typically applicants are submitting about two, maybe even three pages, uh, you know, for their resume. Um, but in it, we just think it's vital, right? Because um, the application readers are gonna be looking at your resume to really understand um, the other accomplishments um, that you've done um, in terms of, you know, leadership, you know, employment, community service, volunteering. Things that you may not have put in either your statement of purpose or your personal statement, they will refer to your resume. So the resume is just another way um, of being able to provide another outlook in terms of who you are um, uh, personally and professionally. All right, and then last we will ask for three letters of recommendations. Um, and so three are gonna be required. As you enter the application, uh, there's a section where you'll be able to enter your recommender's name, um, email address, and uh, once you do that, they are able to uh, receive the electronic form, okay? So once you fill out their information, you press the add button, uh, they should eat immediately, right, within a few minutes, uh, receive an email from the UCLA Graduate Division saying, hey, you've been you know, recommended to write, you know, a recommendation letter for person A or person B or whatever the case is. Of that, um, of the three that you will be selecting and choosing, we hope that um, one would be a current employer, so that it's highly recommended. There are instances where um, a employer um, may not share maybe the same um, educational journeys or career path as you, right? And, uh, you know, they may not want you to advance uh, maybe as quickly as you may think. And so they may not um, be someone that may write you a good letter of recommendation. Uh, if that's the case, uh, we definitely would not want you to have them write one. So if you have maybe a past employer, they can do that. Or let's just say maybe you switch positions or you know been hired to a new hospital um, and you haven't been there long enough to build kind of that rapport with that uh, employer. 
if that's the case, then you can also go back to a past employer. But for those who may be working at the current hospital for a while, we do ask that it be a current employer. Um, and that uh, with that, um, hopefully one of them will be a nursing supervisor, right? And so one thing that we really don't want is of course, no family or friends. Um, and then also if there was someone who may be a nurse uh, who has um, uh, a lateral kind of position to you, right? So we don't want someone who's in the same position as you to write a letter of recommendation. So we are asking it to be an employer or a, nurse, or a nursing supervisor that will be able to talk about your skills, um, your abilities, and the future success uh, while you're in our advanced practice program. Okay, before I get to the prerequisites, I'm gonna do a quick pause because I do see that there are some questions. So I'm gonna pause here and see if I can answer some of those for you. Okay, another really good question. It says, does our program accept uh, DACA um, and or undocumented students? Yes, we do. So we do accept uh, DACA and undocumented students into our program. We have in the past and they've been successful graduating and so forth. So yes, we do. All right, someone is asking about our DMP program. Uh, is there a BS in the DMP direct program? Um, we do not, as of today, have a direct BS in the DMP program, uh, but that is in the works. Um, we're actually going through the different steps uh, through the university. Um, and grad division to get that approved. Uh, so our goal is to have that available for uh, 2025. Uh, so that is our goal. As of now, um, our DMP program is MSN. So it's uh, you know what we consider self-supporting postmasters at MSN, the DMP program. Uh, but within the next uh, year or two, we will have our BS in the DMP program available. Okay, here's another good question. Is it required to have clinical experience as an RN? It's not required, um, but um, if you saw maybe you know one of the first slides, it is recommended to have clinical experience as an RN. Um, if you're thinking about the competitiveness of the program, um, where students are admitted for this year, uh, two had less than a year of experience, whereas I think it was 33 had uh, more than five years of experience. So it's uh, it is imperative that you do have some type of experience. Um, if you don't have as much experience as you would like, um, you could refer back to your experience that you've been gaining while you're a student, um, but uh, our faculty are looking for our own experience. So uh, for someone that may have graduated this spring, uh, you can still apply this fall. Um, uh, and what our faculty also do is they look at um, knowing that if you're applying in the fall, at the time they reach your applications, um, they will be assuming that you're still working, right? So. Uh, we take it basically at the time of uh, when your application is reviewed. Um, okay, so just so someone's asking, uh, okay, so since the program, since it's an online program, will there be opportunities to meet my cohort? Do we meet in person? Okay, so this is not an online program. Um, and so our program is totally in person. Uh, to where you'll be seeing your cohorts, you know, almost on a daily basis. Um, if that has to do again, coming to class for the theory courses, if it's studying um, and so forth. So uh, just to remind you guys that this is a in-person full-time program. Um, another good question, can classes be transferred in? Uh, so the university only allows up to eight units of transfer credit. So in essence, it could be about one or two courses. So for someone who may be currently at um, another university doing the advanced practice program, you can apply to our program. Um, and if admitted, uh, you will be only be able to transfer in about two courses. Uh, that will be determined by our faculty once admitted into the program. We'll be able to look at your transcripts and determine if there's any courses that um, are equivalent to what is being taught in the specialty. Okay. Is UCLA going to have a CRA program in the future? I do not believe so. Um, right now we're focusing on the DMP. Um, and I think once we get that up and going, um, we may think about other programs to bring in, but as of now, uh, there's been no discussion for the CRNA. Uh, let's see. Oh, 
for it for people who are just beginning to work as an RN and cannot get a recommendation letter uh, from the nurse and supervisor by the time of the application, uh, then can the letters come from others like professional like professors and clinical instructors? Yes, that's a really good question. So yes, um, your letter recommendations can come from even a mentor, right? A professor, a clinical instructor, a supervisor, um, whoever the case is. Um, so yes, if you feel like you don't want to use your current supervisor just because you've just started working there, that's okay. Uh, we just really don't want any family or friends or anyone in a lateral position. Okay. How soon after submitting your application do you find out the acceptance in the program? That's a great question. Um, and so it's going to be on one of these slides, um, but I'll go ahead and say now the application deadline is going to be December 1st. And the goal is to have our applicants um, find out their admission decision by March. So the goal is March. So for us, it's a quick turnaround. You know, you'll find out within three months, man. Okay. Okay, so someone is asking, does the program honor UC tuition discount if you're currently working for a, in, the, in the UC system? So yes. Um, if you work in the UC system, um, I believe you have to maintain at least, you know, 50% and you'll be eligible for the uh, tuition reduction. And I believe it's about two thirds. So it's about 66, 67% off the tuition, which is really cool. So we do have students that do take advantage of that that work in the UC system. Okay, if we use AP classes to meet our BSN requirements, can that be used for the MSN program too? So yes, we do accept AP um, credit, but we only um, would allow one course of AP, uh, of the AP, AP score to be used for the prerequisite. So um, you wouldn't be able to use more than one AP score uh, for the four prerequisites that you're seeing here. Okay, another good question. And yeah, so this will lead me into, um, talking about the supplemental application in terms of the prereqs. Um, so someone is asking, uh, can you apply and um, take the physical assessment course after being admitted? So the answer is yes, so that's a really good question. So let's go into that. Um, of the four prerequisites, or of the prerequisites required uh, for admission to the program, there's gonna be four. Uh, so there's gonna be human physiology, which we're asking for it to be done within the last five years, right? So we're thinking 2019 or more recent. There's nursing research, right, at the BS level. Uh, there's gonna be statistics, and then there's gonna be the physical assessment, uh, which we're asking for it to be within the three years or more recent, as well as um, it having to come from one of our approved course listings. So of the two prerequisites that have a time limit, which is human physiology and physical assessment, we actually do offer both of these classes for our admitted student to take during the summer. So actually, if we're to think about it, for the students that are getting ready to start with us this fall, uh, 2023, they are currently taking both human physiology um, and physical assessment, um, or one or the other, right? Just depending on what is missing from you. Uh, but we do offer it um, for our ministers to take during the summer. Typically, in your in your BSN program, um, you have you will have completed the nursing research and a statistics course, and because those have a, don't have a time limit, um, those are the, typically the two courses. Um, that are completed that someone doesn't have to, to retake if it's outside uh, of the time limits. For prerequisites, we do ask that they are completed with a seal better. Um, if you haven't already, definitely refer to our approved list um, on our website that shows all the prerequisites um, that we accept from different universities and even uh, community colleges um, to satisfy those requirements. Um, for your status of your RN license, uh, we are going to ask that you have your RN license at the time um, of entry into the program, right? So you can apply um, and have an out-of-state RN license, um, but we do ask that before you start the program that you'll have it um, before the program starts in September. So for anyone that may be out of state and um, you know are going to be re relocating to California, if you want to get a head start, I recommend doing that now um, because the California Board of Registered Nursing can be pretty slow. Uh, so I would recommend a jump start on that now. Okay, so someone has a question here. Uh, can you have any of the prerequisites in progress while applying? 
Yes, so you can. So you can have any of the prerequisites either in progress where you're applying or even outstanding. You know, we will admit you into the program, um, but your admission will be contingent on, or conditional, I should say, on completing the prerequisites. So we say, hey, you know, congratulations, you've been admitted to the program, but, you know, you still have to complete, you know, human physiology or physical assessment, whatever the case is. And so again, you'll have time, right, if you want to take with us during the summer to complete that. Any more questions on the prereqs? Really good questions there. Okay, so someone is asking a couple of questions here. So um, one, the human physiology course is online. So that's a really good question. The one that we offer in the School of Nursing is online. Um, you can take it online at another institution, um, but the one that we offer is offered online. The physical assessment course is offered in person though. Um, so of course, because there's gonna be the simulator, I'm sorry, the skills lab that is attached to that. So that's why it's an in-person course. Someone is also asking, if I've been out of school for more than five years, uh, will my acceptance decision be altered due to needing to repeat courses? So it's a really good question, no. So um, by having you know, prerequisites outstanding that will not affect your application. Um, and so again, um, you can have all of them completed. You may have to complete two additional before you start. It does not alter the admission decision. So um, that's a really good question. Um, and so yes, you can apply with them outstanding. All right, I'll take a quick pause to see if you guys have any more prereq questions. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, so I know someone had mentioned, um, do we admit, admit international applicants? So yes, of course we do. Um, on top of doing the statement of purpose, personal statement, what is a rec? Um, completing the prereqs, we do ask that international applicants who do not have a um, degree here in the States, they are gonna be required by the university to take the TOEFL and or the IELTS, right? So for the TOEFL exam, we're gonna ask that it be 87 or higher, um, as well as for the IELTS, it'll be seven or higher. Um, if you do have to take it, um, you're gonna see the website here and you're gonna wanna put in the institution code, which is 4837, as well as the intended gradu graduate major code 0610. So basically what you do is when you put that in there, after you take the test, the university will receive the results. That's a lot easier for us to get the results um, as long as you put the institution code and the intended graduate major code. All right, last but not least, as I stated before, the application is gonna be due December 1st. And then um, we actually, what we do is we, we allow your recommenders um, an additional, what about month and a half? Uh, to submit, uh, which is going to be January 15th. Um, that can also be maybe any other thing that may be missing from your application. Uh, we will be in contact with you throughout the duration of the application. Say, hey, thank you for applying, um, but you may have missed something. Um, and what we do is we give you, you know, applicable um, time uh, to get that in. So we want to make sure that the application is submitted by December 1st, um, and then you'll have until January 15th to submit anything else. Um, really fast, our application is on Eastern Standard Time. Um, so don't be alarmed if it's December 1st and you apply at 11, you know, 50 p.m. And it says, hey, congratulations. You know, you, you've applied, but it's, you know, timestamp December 2nd, uh, that's okay. Uh, we know that happens sometimes, but as long as it's submitted um, before the 2nd, right? So 11.59, December 1st, you're good to go. Okay. All right, so let's see if there's any more questions before we get to the financial aid section. Okay, let's see here. All right, so uh, since this is an MSN program, we're hoping to complete the DMP program in the future at UCLA. Uh, can we apply for that while we're in the MSN program to bridge directly into the DMP program? Or we have to completely, or we have to be basically complete the program and then apply before? That's a good question. Um, in essence, you could apply your second year um, to enter into the DMP program, but it's not necessarily a direct bridge. Um, it's just, you know, you, you know, know that you're going to complete your program a year or two and then applying directly into the DMP program. You could do that. In essence, we've had someone who've completed our master's entry program 
Um, and during year two, she applied to our PhD program. And so um, once she finished the Mekin program, uh, she started a couple months later into the PhD. So uh, that is a possibility. So you could do that. Okay, I'll hang tight for maybe 30 more seconds, and then I'm going to play the financial aid video from our director of financial aid. Okay, I'm going to do a new share. And I'm going to go ahead and play. Okay, I'm going to press play and hopefully you guys should be able to hear this. Please put something in the chat or maybe the Q&A for any reason you're unable to hear. Here we go. Hi everyone, my name is Leone. I'm the Director of Financial Aid at the School of Nursing. Welcome to our information session. I'm so glad you have joined us. In this presentation, I will be sharing an overview of financial aid at the School of Nursing. But if you have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us at financialaid.sonnet.ucla.edu. In this session, we'll be going over a few topics, including how to apply for financial aid, annual student fees and the cost of attendance for your program, how to fund your education, and important dates to keep in mind. To begin the process of applying for financial aid, you will need to complete a financial aid application. To know which application to complete, you can reference the information in the table on the right. Most students complete the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA for short. Students that are not eligible for federal aid can apply for state aid through the California DREAM Act application. Now let's zoom in on annual student fees for your program. Annual fees are currently set at 26,116 for one academic year. If you are a non-resident, you will need to pay a supplemental tuition fee of 12,245. Fees are assessed quarterly, so a resident student would pay about 8,705 in tuition and fees each quarter. Student fees include UC-wide and campus-based fees. You can find a specific breakdown of all the fee components on the annual and term student fees page on the registrar's website. Health insurance coverage is mandatory for all students. Students are automatically enrolled in the UC SHIP health insurance plan, which has a fee of $4,714 per year. The UC SHIP health insurance requirement and fees can be waived if you already have adequate insurance coverage. The cost of attendance, or COA for short, is an allowance based on the educational expenses that students might incur. So the COA includes direct and indirect costs, and it's also the maximum amount of financial aid students can receive during an enrollment period. You will see in the pie chart the different components of the cost of attendance. The total projected budget is currently 61382 you'll see that tuition and fees is just one part of, the, of that component. The rest also include room and meals, books and supplies, transportation, health insurance, and even loan fees. So students can fund their education in a combination of ways, through scholarships, loans, and working at UCLA. Grants or scholarships, is gift aid that you won't have to pay back. And those include fellowships through the graduate division, which you can apply to on your application for admissions. 
and all students who submit a financial aid application and a School of Nursing scholarship application will receive some sort of scholarship funding. That can include scholarships that are based on your program or interests, need-based scholarships like the Audrey and H. Mosley Scholarship or HRSA Scholarship for Disadvantaged Students. We also have merit scholarships. And we always encourage students to expand their scholarship search and look for outside scholarships. Loans is borrowed money that you will need to pay back. This includes direct unsubsidized loan, which can be offered up to $20,500 per academic year, a direct graduate plus loan, which is based on um, ha students having adequate credit, the dream loan for our DREAM Act application students up to $4,000 annually. Nursing students also qualify for a nursing student loan. And there are also a lot of private loan options. Lastly, some students choose to work at UCLA. So this requires, of course, that you work and you earn money or employer-based benefits. So either you can qualify for federal work study and be a work study student somewhere on campus. There's also um, academic apprenticeships where you can qualify for fee remissions and UC employees. So eligible regular status UC employees can qualify for a two thirds tuition reduction in the student services and tuition fees. Now, before we end our presentations, I want to highlight some important dates. Each year on October 1st, the financial aid applications open. On November 1st is the deadline to apply for fellowships through the graduate division. March 2nd is the financial aid application priority deadline. So you want to make sure to submit your FAFSA or DREAM application by this date. In May, typically our School of Nursing scholarship application opens, and this is shared with students after they are admitted. And in June is when our scholarship application deadline is set. You can find more information about financial aid at the School of Nursing on our website at nursing.ucla.edu slash financial aid, or feel free to email me your specific questions at financial aid at sonnet.ucla.edu. Thanks for listening. All right. Let's get back to the PowerPoint. OK, so I hope you guys were able to get some really good information from Leone. Again, she's our wonderful director of financial aid. Um, and uh, for our students um, that enter the university, in the School of Nursing, uh, for those that apply for FAFSA and submit paperwork and information, uh, majority of our students are able to receive, receive some type of funding. Uh, so that is really important is to ensure that our students are going to be successful, stress-free, you know, as you're thinking about tuition um, requirements and everything else that comes um, about from the program. So um, I want you guys to know that uh, the A-team, right, is what we call ourselves. We are going to be in charge of processing the application. Um, and you're going to be meeting myself. Uh, here's Jamie Gama, as well as Natalie Asensio. Um, and so you'll make, we'll make sure that once you submit your application, you'll be you know, hearing from us throughout the application process. Again, they say, hey, thanks for applying. The application is complete. You're good to go. You know, and or, hey, you're missing some things. Um, and you'll have until January 15th to submit. Um, we do our best to ensure that you guys feel comfortable throughout the application process. Um, and just you know, making sure that uh, when March comes around, um, that uh, you'll begin everything that you need from us. Um, and so I just want to say thank you guys um, really fast as we're talking about the transcripts. Again, um, you'll be submitting unofficial transcripts at the time of application. But once you're admitted into the program, we're going to say, hey, uh, submit your official transcripts. If your university offers them electronically, you're going to see our, our website. I'm sorry, our uh, email address here, which is admission.sonnet, which is S-O-N-N-E-T at ucla.edu and or if they uh, send it you know, through the mail, um, here's our address here. Again, you don't have to worry about this, uh, but for anyone that may be wanting to get a head start, feel free to screenshot this 
Um, and now once you receive your admission decision, uh, you'll be able to have your, you know, the opportunity of submitting your transcripts. All right, and so with that, um, it concludes uh, today's information session. Uh, we really hope that this helped provide some information that you need to complete a successful application. Um, we're excited. Um, I'm really excited to know that you guys took some time out of your day today to help answer uh, maybe any you know questions, concerns that you may have about the program, but also ultimately just hopefully providing some excitement. Um, so I just want to say thank you for that. Um, feel free to scan this QR code if you want to provide some feedback. Uh, but what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm just going to hang tight to see if you guys have any questions. Um, and since we're you know we're ending you know pretty early. I'm gonna stay tight for a little bit and maybe help answer any questions for you guys. Uh, but again, just wanna say thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. So don't be shy. If you have any questions, feel free to put that in the q and I'll hang tight for a little bit to help answer any questions. Okay, someone is asking, have I had the chance to follow up on the graduate's employment status? Could you reframe that question? Um, and I'll be able to answer that. What do you mean by a follow up on the graduate's employment status? Feel free to rearrange that question and I'll be happy to answer that for you. Okay, there's another one. Um, Okay, for prerequisites, it says by the time I apply, my physio course will most likely be expired. Um, can I take those at a community college? Yes, or even through UCLA. So yes, so the, remember the two prerequisites that have a time limit is human physiology and physical assessment. Now, human physiology is gonna be offered at a community college, physical assessment is not. Typically, physical assessment is offered at the university level. Um, and so for human physiology, you could take that at the community college or you could take it at UCLA. Whereas for the physical assessment, we do highly recommend that you actually take that with us here at UCLA. Um, but just to reiterate, human physiology and physical assessment have a time limit. Uh, statistics and nursing research do not. Okay. All right, so someone says, just to confirm for the UC tuition for UC employees, uh, we need to be employed at least 50% to continue. Yes, and that is correct. And then you'll be able to receive the two thirds off the tuition. So remember, it's just gonna be the tuition, um, the university fees, right? So it's not gonna be the accumulation. So it's not gonna be, um, you know, if you need, you know, grad housing or insurance or transportation, all of those are gonna be additional. Um, so it's just gonna be the university fee slash tuition. Um, but even with that, right, two thirds off of that is amazing. Okay, here's another question. Um, says, I have a BA. Uh, BSN and ADN, awesome. Uh, would I submit all of the unofficial transcripts? Yes, you would. Yes, so we ask that you submit your ADN. I know it's at a community college, um, but you'll be submitting that as well as your BSN and your BA at the time of application, yes. Oh, okay, thank you for, re for restating that question. So um, 
have there been anyone who've graduated from our program able to find a job? So yeah, yeah, most of our students are able to find employment, um, you know, as an NP or as a CNS, depending on, you know, what specialty um, and certification that they went for. Um, and so yes, they are able to find employment. Again, we have it where students, or I should say our graduates now, find employment here in California, Los Angeles. Um, we've even had them, you know, go across different parts of the country as well. So a lot of them are able to find employment. Um, and so, yes, we are excited about that. Uh, for the students that are just, well, just graduated, I'll say just graduated because we finished our academic year in middle of June. Um, a lot of them are still, you know, um, studying and, and uh, getting ready to take the national certification exam. So we're, we're waiting to hear back on how well they did. And then also at the same time, see where they're finding their employment. So we'll be finding the information fairly soon for our 2023 graduates. All right, I'm gonna wait maybe a couple more minutes. Let's see if you guys have any other questions. Once again, just wanna say thank you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us or reach out to me if you guys have, do have any other questions, wanna set up a meeting. You know, whatever the case is, we're here for you. So I just wanna say thank you again. All right, well, without further ado, I see some people starting to log off. So I'll go ahead and do the same. Just wanna say thank you guys again and hope to be hearing um, and seeing you guys in the future. Thanks again.